So let's suppose that we are given the following reactant Halloween and we mix it with an electrophile. So our goal is to basically predict what type of reactant will predominate. Will it be the meta product that will predominate or will it be the ortho para product? So let's begin by examining the intermediate carbocations that exist for the ortho para. Now in the previous lecture we looked at the ortho so in this lecture we're going to follow the para mechanism. So let's begin with our molecule toluene. So we have our benzene molecule shown here. We have our pi bond here, we have the pi bond here, the pi bond here, we also have this methyl group. So basically we have our electrophile that reacts to produce a resonance stabilized structure. So we have the following error formulism. We have our positive charge on this electrophile and basically this here grabs this electrophile. So the power position is the fourth position. The ortho position is the second position and the meta is the third position. And because we're examining the ortho para pair, it doesn't matter which one of these we look at. So we can look at the ortho or we can look at the para. So I chose arbitrarily to look at the para. So this is our para. substitution. So in the first step we have this basically creating a bond so we have the pi bond here, pi bond here and our methyl group here. So this contains a positive charge. So we have a positive charge on this fourth, uh, fifth carbon. And of course we have resonance stabilization. So we have our charge that basically resonates between different positions. So if this pi bond goes into here, we basically form a molecule that contains the positive charge on this position here. So these go onto here and we form a positive charge right on here. And of course we can have a third structure in which these go onto here. So we form a pi bond here and the positive charge basically jumps onto this carbon here, which is our uh, two, three, the third carbon. So let's draw our structure here. and we have a positive charge that appears on this carbon here. Okay, so this is the para substitution. Now we're not going to draw the ortho because it's pretty much the same exact thing. So let's look at the meta and let's see what the meta substitution will produce, what type of intermediate it will produce. So basically for the para, we have instead of this pi bond, this pi bond interacted because for meta we have the bond that is formed between this carbon which is the third carbon and our electrophile we have a positive charge here we have the electrons that are here form a bond and we form resonance stabilized structures So we should have three structures, so let's just draw the three cyclohexanes. cyclohexanes. So we have here, here, this E ends up here. We have our CH3 group, CH3 group, CH3 group. So basically, initially, our charge is found on this first carbon here. But of course, we have resonance stabilization as a result of the proximity of this pi bond, and so it forms a bond right over here. So we still have the pi bond here. We have our E group on the third carbon. We have a pi bond here. And so we have 
uh, charge on this sixth carbon. And finally, if this pi bond conveniently decides to make a pi bond between this sixth and fifth carbon, we basically have the charge jump to this carbon here. So we have delocalization taking place. And the charge, final charge, ends up on this carbon here. So basically these are all the three resonance stabilized structures. And the question is, which one of these structures is the more stable structure and why? Well, let's examine the meta and let's just mark this as being the meta. So we have a secondary carbocation here, a secondary carbocation here, and a secondary carbocation here. Here we have a secondary, a tertiary, and a secondary. So we have two secondaries and a tertiary and three secondaries and of course the one that contains the tertiary will be the more stabilizing one so this will actually win out so basically as a result the fact that this has a tertiary and two secondaries and this has all three being the secondaries the para ortho product will be the one that will predominate for this particular mono substituted benzene. Now actually if we wanted to look at even greater detail we can draw a fourth resonance stabilized form for this molecule that comes from this molecule. So basically the fourth resonance stabilized form looks something like this. So basically you could see it better if you look at this and then uh, directly draw the resonance stabilized form. So let's redraw it in this way so that we can see it slightly better. So remember, all these are basically Lewis dot structures and all these Lewis dot structures are equivalent in a sense that all the atoms are found on the same exact pos uh, position. So when we draw resonance stabilized forms, we are allowed to move electrons, but we are never allowed to move the atoms. Now look what, we, look what we can also do. So basically these two electrons in the bond between the H and the carbon can form a pi bond between this carbon and this carbon. And that charge basically ends up going on to this particular atom, this H atom. So our charge is delocalized among four atoms in this case and only among three atoms in this case as a result of the proximity between this positive charge and this carbon here. So let's draw the final resonant form. So we're going from this one. So we have the E being here. We have the two uh, pi bonds and we have these and the H uh, stays here. Remember, we're not moving the H's, we're moving the electrons. So the atom H remains intact, remains in that position, but this bond basically forms a pi bond. So we have a fourth resonance structure in this particular case, and that's exactly why the para ortho product is the one that will predominate over this meta simply because there is a tertiary carbocation which basically creates this fourth resonance stabilized form that looks a bit funky but I mean if we follow the rules this is exactly right because to draw a resonance stabilized form you basically move, are allowed to move the electrons, but you cannot really move the atoms. And that's exactly what we did here. We kept the atom in the same exact position, but we simply moved our electrons. And so we're going to have a charge here.